Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. There was a few comments on my last video that prompted me to to consider doing a quick video here to describe a few things. Now, if you've looked at the, the re my recent videos, especially the one where I talk about how Jesus is going to kill the beast at the beginning of the harvest, and I talk about you know raptures up into to the heavenly Mount Zion and all these good things, I think some of the folks who've been studying this for years are like, well, what about all the bad stuff? I mean, that's all we hear about is bad stuff. And it's going to be horrific for the second fruits and for the third fruits. And I just want to spend a little bit of time speaking about that. And I'm going to go to a book of the Bible that describes this event. And I'm going to show you guys how crazy how insane the word of god is now if you were if you were didn't understand what's going on or how how the lord's going to work this isaiah 24 is essentially describing these events now i want to go through isaiah 24 and show you the the absolute absurdity of god's word if anybody were to read this and not have a clue what it means you would think boy the god that you worship is strange how can all these horrific things be going on at the same time there's a group of people who is singing praises it makes no sense unless you look at it in this light so look right here let's go ahead this is isaiah 24 this is when events begin and the judgment of the earth begins when the earth is ripped apart torn asunder just horrific let me go ahead and read it now behold the lord will empty the earth and make it desolate the lord will twist its surface, scatter its inhabitants. And as it shall be, as with the people, so the priest, as with the slave, the master, the maid, the mistress, the buyer, the seller, everybody on the planet, the priest, that would be, you know, our pastors and priests and rabbis, the lender, the creditor, the borrower, the, you know, all, everybody. Sorry. The earth shall be utterly plundered. The Lord has spoken it. The earth mourns and withers. It, the world languishes. And I think this is the sixth seal and the beginning of the trumpet judgment, is my opinion. Um, the highest people on earth will languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. The curse devours the earth. Its inhabitants suffer guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched. Few men are left. The mind went, okay, it's pretty darn bad, okay? No more drinking wine and singing, okay? The wasted city is broken down. The desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered. This is everybody, okay? This is everybody on the planet, okay? Then all of a sudden, with all, of the, at the gleaning when the grape harvest, when's the grape harvest done? The grape harvest is done at the end of the summer. So we can see that all this is going to happen through the summertime, maybe this summer. Then all of a sudden, you got this other group of people with all that sheer, absolute chaos, hell, death, murder, everything. All of a sudden, you have this group of people that say, they lift up their voices, they sing for joy over the majesty of the Lord. They shout from the west, therefore from the east, they give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea, they give glory in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise of the glory of the righteous one. But I say, so who, who is this group? This is the group that I keep talking about. That's the first fruits. They're the guys that get to go up to the new heavenly Jerusalem. They hear what's really going to happen. They come back down to help those who are left behind on the earth. Then they're going to go around and they're going to start witnessing about Jesus to these people. Then people on the earth will begin to respond. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away. Woe is me, for traitors have betrayed. With betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. Then there's people that won't listen to the smooth words of Jesus. You should read about this in Isaiah 28. They say, I won't listen. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees the sound of terror shall, shall fall into the pit. For the windows of heaven are open and the foundation of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. It violently shaking. The earth staggers like a drunken man. The transgression lies heavy upon it. 
And what what does Jesus do? On that day, I will punish the host of heaven. That's the fallen angels in heaven. And I will punish the kings of the earth, all of them, including the um, the little horn, the beast, they will be gathered together in a pit. They will be shut up in prison. After many days, they will be punished. The moon will be confounded and the sun will be ashamed. That's the sixth seal. And the Lord of hosts will reign on the heavenly Mount Zion in the new city, Jerusalem. And he will, and his glory will be before the elders Okay, in heaven on the new city, Jerusalem. Okay, so when you read about this, let me just go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 is when all this begins. It all begins with a, the whole, behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong. It would be he himself, mighty and strong. A storm of hail, destroying tempest, he's cast down to the earth, okay? The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim, the congressmen, the, the, the people who run the United States, okay? The first ripe fig will be taken before summer. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people who are in the heavenly Mount Zion, having that uh, Jeremiah 31 party. And then the earth is shaking and everybody is basically seasick and every table has vomit over it, like it says right there. And then it says this, it says, for by, pe- for by a people of strange lips with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to this people, that's us speaking to them, and will try to give them rest, say, hey, there's rest in the Lord, give rest to the weary, this is the words that Jesus used, that we're going to be given to them. And they say, yet they would not hear it, they don't want to hear anything about Jesus, all hell's breaking loose. People are dead. Bodies are piled up in the streets. They don't want to hear anything about it. They're going to fall back, be snared, and be broken. So the reason I bring all this up is I I don't want people to think that I'm just not paying too much attention to the sheer absolute hell that's going to be on earth. Here, this this is what the prophet Isaiah in chapter 28 says when this this Passover occurs. There's a Passover. I think it's the the Planet X Passover. He says, as often as it passes, it will take you morning by morning. It will pass through day by night. And it will be, it will be sheer terror to understand this message. Horrific. Sorry. So, I just wanted to pass that information by that it's not going to be hunky-dory for everybody, only for the first fruits. And some of the first fruits are going to come back down and share the glories of heaven, as it says in Psalm 48, to the second fruits. Okay, so I want to jump to another study I have here. I had to delete a comment. I don't delete comments too often, but I can tell when somebody is sarcastic and a little rude. Um, they ask a question, and they ask the question when they know the answer. When that happens... Uh, Sorry about that. When that happens, I can tell that they already know the answer to the question, and they just want to kind of beat me over the head with their answer. So there was a a, a comment the other day. I'm going to go over Revelation 12. Okay, I'm going to go over Revelation 12. I, I made a reference to Revelation 12, um, what happens in Revelation 12, where there is a rapture of the child. Some people say it's the man-child, but we're going to talk about that here in a second. Um Oh, I got the wrong study up here, guys. Hold on a second. Oh, uh, where do I have it? Don't tell me. Revelation 12, the woman, alien AT, sign you got it. Wait, wait, let me just jump to this. So what he said was, he said, Revelation 12, yeah, Revelation 12, this great sign, you know, and the woman uh, was pregnant, crying out with labor and pain. He, he, he was very adamant. It was a he, at least. Um, and he said, he said, Revelation 12 has nothing to do with the future. It's all past. He goes, you can't, there's no raptures in Revelation 12. So I, I tried very diligently to explain to him, well, there is a, let's look at what, let's look at the charge that Jesus gave to John to write down this, to write down the, um, the book of Revelation. In Revelation 1, verse 19, Jesus says, Write therefore the things you have seen, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reread that again. I'm going to add a... 
as my dogs are barking. I'm going to add a little bit to it. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, seen in this vision, okay? Those... Hey, guys, sorry that my daughter came home and my dogs are just fanatics. Um, okay, all right, so Jesus gave John the charge. Write, therefore, the things that you've seen that would be in this vision, okay? And he says... Those that are, that are, that would be those events that are, that you saw in the vision, and those that are to take place after this. So the information that John saw, the vision he had, were to occur at John's present time and in the future. So Revelation 12, therefore, could not have been the birth of Jesus in 3 BC because John got this instruction from Jesus about 95 AD or 96 AD. Therefore, that means that everything in the book of Revelation is, is future, or at least present. So it has nothing to do with, um, with Jesus' birth. And this is a huge, a huge sticking point for a lot of people in the church even people that have PhDs, I've interacted with one, a very nice guy, a very learned uh, gentleman. I'm not going to get into who it is, but um, he's got great stuff on YouTube. And I shared that with him. And he basically told me that Revelation 12 is Jesus being born. And I was trying to get over to him that, hey, verse Revelation 119 kind of stipulates the rules on what the vision is. And he was stickling to it. He didn't want to hear anything about a great sign. He didn't want to hear anything about this birth of a child, a rapture, all that stuff. Um, and it really saddened me because I'm thinking, how can he how can he not see that? But that's just, you know, when you look at something for 50 years a certain way, then all of a sudden there's something new that comes along. It's hard for people to, um, to adjust. So I want to go through and I want to talk about Revelation 12. Not sure why I can't find it all of a sudden, guys. Let me go back. Revelation 12, the breakdown of the father's sign. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I, I want to review Revelation 12 and show you a little bit of a mystery that's in here that is more than even those who have looked at this in the past have, have seen. And I think. Um, Brenda Wentner, I think she's the one who turned me on to this. So the Re Revelation 12, uh, a lot of people are aware of the child, the man child, but they might not be aware that there's actually two types of children being mentioned here. One, one child is raptured while another son, a son of God, is going to rule the nations with a rod of iron, and that, that's the 144,000. So let me go ahead and start from the beginning. Okay. This is the sons of God compared to the children of Zion. The sons of God, or the man child, appear to be the 144,000, but scripture in two places refers to a second larger group called Zion's children. In Isaiah 66, the woman's child, yeah, you see this in Isaiah 66 and in the woman's child from Revelation 12. We see this in Isaiah 66, verses 7 and 8, and Revelation 12, verses 4 and 5. Paul also speaks about these sons of God in Romans 8, 19, where the whole world groans for them to be revealed during a terrible time of trouble, where these few, the harvest workers that the Lord will send out, will bring in the harvest of the many, as we learn in Luke 10. This is a typology of the Lord showing us in Luke concerning the end time harvest. Okay, so when we jump to Isaiah 66, this is what we see. We see that in verse 7, there is what's known as a zakar. Uh, Nick Vanderland talks about this a lot. A zakar, it's, a, it's kind of an heir, which is a son or the man-child. It's brought forth before Zion goes into labor and travails. So these sons of God, 144,000, they appear to be brought forth before the absolute chaos and travail begins. Then, as soon as the travailing begins, or when Zion's tribulation begins, she delivers her children, which appear to be a larger group that is brought forth 
after the trail Hebrew begins. So we have two different groups, two Hebrew words, a zakar, a son of God, and a ben, which means children. So when we read Isaiah 66, we see this, a voice, a noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders recompense to his enemies. Before Zion travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she delivered a zakar, a man-child. Okay? Then it says this, it says, then it says, who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Now, a lot of people think in 1948, this was somehow fulfilled but obviously i don't think it was or shall a nation be born all at once for as for as soon as zion travailed she brought forth her children it would be strong's 1121 ben so i see two groups here okay so notice how the man child is brought forth before the decree of destruction above so, so many people like to say the Jews returning to the land of Israel May 14, 1948 is the fulfillment of the scripture. But I think it's just a type and a shadow. It's not a literal fulfillment. Plus, when you read Isaiah 66, verses 1 through 5, God is complaining about the Jews wanting to build a third temple. And that never happened in 1948. God also is complaining about the Jews wanting to sacrifice an animal. Okay, nobody was talking about that in 1948, but they're talking about that now. That's why it's now. Okay, we see this same exact typology in Revelation 12. We see a man child, and we see, I say children, but really it's a singular child. Okay, the same pattern here we see like in Isaiah 66 in Revelation 12. Now we have it in the Greek now. In the Greek, we see two different words Strong's 5043 and 507 for child. So five, the the five two o oh, seven. It is guys. This is real technical. Is the child, and this is the technon that's raptured up to heaven, while the man child is left to rule the earth. Now, this interpretation is different from what most people have considered in the past. So this is new understanding, as far as I'm concerned. Let me go through and read it. Okay. Then I put here. I said, how can the man child be raptured up to heaven, and then at the same time be ruling the earth? Well, let's go ahead and read it. And his tail drew a third of the part of the stars and did cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who which was ready to be delivered to devour her child. And that's technon. That's like a regular child. As soon as it was born, and she brought forth a man-child. That word man-child is huios. It's Strong's 5207. It's a son of God. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her technon child was caught up, that's raptured, unto God and to his throne. Then the woman, I would say is the body of Christ, the lukewarm church, fled into the wilderness on earth where she would has a place prepared for her that, they sh that she should be nourished for 1260 days. So we have three entities here. We have the man child then we have this regular child and then we have the woman and each one has a slightly different ending now some people have just conflated and assumed that the the man child and the regular child are the same entity i say they're not i want to and if isaiah 66 if that wasn't there then i probably say okay the Lord refers to the child as a man-child, which is like an heir. It's a little higher position than a regular child. But not we have but no, we have Isaiah 66 to further force this pattern upon us where we can look at this a little bit differently. The problem is we read this in English and we don't see it. Let me just show it to you in English here. Well, without all my my stuff included. It says, um, she was pregnant and crying out in birth. Okay, yeah. And another sign appeared. Okay. Um, and the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth. So when she bore her child, her technon child, uh, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child. That's the, that's the son of God who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But the child... That's a different, that's not the Son of God. If we were reading this in the Greek, we would immediately see that there's a difference. But when we read it in the English, we're stuck with this child and child when they're not the same entity. 
So the child, the technon, the ben, the slightly lower level position, I would say, is going to be raptured up to God into his throne, into the throne on Mount Zion to top that floating city. But the woman flees into the wilderness where she has a place prepared, a place prepared for her to be nourished for 1260 days. Okay, real quick, this is, this is Christian people. Christians are taken off the planet. Some go into the wilderness. Then there's this war in heaven with the fallen angels come down. And then we have another reference to a woman. Okay, And this woman is going to be nourished for a time's time and half a time. This, in my opinion, is the second half of the seven years. And this is the Jewish woman who thought, who was very excited to see that temple rebuilt. And they worshipped in that temple and they sacrificed for the first three and a half years. While the Christian woman was in the wilderness, the Jewish woman was having a great time in their temple, their newly built third temple. Then all of a sudden, the Antichrist decides he's going to be worshipped. He storms down to that temple in the middle of the seven years. He commits the abomination. And now this Jewish woman is on the run and she's taken by the Lord. That's why there's two women with two different time frames mentioned in Revelation 12. So like I said in a previous video, Revelation 12 is an overview of the entire seven years. The first part of the seven, the woman is in the wilderness. The Christian lukewarm woman is in the wilderness being refined. And when the witnesses are killed by the beast that comes up out of the abyss at the midpoint, then this woman, in my opinion, is raptured up to heaven. Then all of a sudden, the Lord's going to turn his attention to the Jewish woman. Because the Jews are going to realize once the Antichrist comes down to the temple at the midpoint and steps in that temple and proclaims himself to be God, they're going to immediately realize they made a huge mistake in putting their faith in him. They're going to think he's one of them. But then when he turns on them and he says, I'm God, and he mouths blasphemous words, then they're going to be on the run. That's why there's two women referred to in Revelation 12. That's how I see it. And the first woman is the first half for 1260 days. And the second half is the times time and half a time. That's mentioned in Daniel 7. Okay. Whew, that's a lot of words. Let me get back to my... Um... So what I have is I have a summary here at the bottom. Okay. So... The summary is this. The sons of God, the 144,000, will be brought forth and revealed before the tribulation begins. They will stay down on earth and work the harvest and assist in the Goshens, the places of safety, as specified in Revelation 12, 6, to protect the lukewarm church woman. The sons of God, I, I call them the friends of the groom. You could call them part of the bride, but I like to refer to them as friends of the groom. The children of God, they will be brought forth just as the tribulation begins, and they will experience some travailing in pain, but will quickly be caught up and raptured to heaven. This group appears to be the bride of Christ, who's made herself ready, and of course the innocents will go with her. Then the lukewarm, which I would speculate is 90% of the Christians of today, the lukewarm woman, the church, will be birthed, who birthed 144,000, and the bride that came out, the bride and the 144,000 came out of the church, Remember, come out of her. But since she lacked purity, she will be sent into the wilderness to experience refinement. Now, I, I get a lot of questions where people say, the woman that's in Revelation 12, that's the Jewish remnant. Well, like I said, yes, the second half. I have another document here. This is titled, The Woman Sent into the Wilderness Will Be Judged by Jesus face to face. You guys can, I'm not going to go through this, but this is a study that uses the Old Testament to give us the backstory. Because when you simply read Revelation 12, you're left confused. Who is this woman? And that's where the confusion comes. But if you read the Old Testament and learn what is being prophesied from the Old Testament unfulfilled prophecies, you can understand who the woman is Okay, like Isaiah 31. This woman is really the children of Israel. It says, you guys can read this for yourself. I can't go through this right now. But Isaiah 32, the woman who is at ease receives a one-year warning before she's sent into the wilderness. 
You can read this right here, Isaiah 32, 9. Rise up, you women who are at ease. You know, in a year and a few days, you know, Ezekiel's 390 days, you will shudder. You complacent woman, tremble you women until the Spirit is poured out upon us and into the wilderness you go for 1260 days from Revelation 12. See, this, the, the Revelation 12 woman is the Isaiah 32 woman. And you get a lot more information when you read Isaiah 32 than if you only read Revelation 12. You get the same thing from Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20 speaks about this. Same thing. Um, it, it, he, here the Lord says, I will be king over you. He's saying uh, he's going to weed out the bad guys and those with a little bit of faith will be left. And then the Lord's going to go and says, I will be king over you and I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples and there I will plead with you face to face. That's Jesus speaking to this lukewarm woman. The same thing in Hosea 2. It's this woman. Again, Therefore the Lord says, I will allure her, bring her into the wilderness, and speak tenderly to her. Meanwhile, the first fruits are up in the heavenly Mount Zion, in, in, in heaven. I'll make a covenant with you. You know, all that whole thing. Okay. Um, I think that is it for now. So I, I know, I just, I just want to make the statement here. You know, I, I talk about this a lot where people struggle with this idea about the Antichrist. You know, yes, it's going to be good for the first fruits to not have to worry about this guy initially, but he's going to come on the scene after he rises up from the pit of hell, and he's going to take over the world after Jesus allows him to do that. He's not the guy that's going to start everything off. Jesus is going to start the whole thing off. And you can read here in Habakkuk 3 that it's Jesus, the Holy One, who's riding a horse, and as he comes pestilence and plague follow at his heels this is the fourth seal because he's riding the white horse at the first seal he's going to shoot out his arrows he's going to crush the head of the house of the wicked same thing we see in jeremiah 4 same thing we see all over the place really so with that guys i'll let you go have a great day and god bless you